Welcome to this week's episode, which is episode eight of Robo Weekly. I'd like to welcome my co-host, Dan. Dan, how's it going? Eight. I am in Pittsburgh this week, which is uh, right. probably the autonomous vehicle capital of the world and also the uh, National Robotics Center is here. Right. So, uh, and Carnegie Mellon, of course. Yeah. Um, I used to work. I, I worked at Carnegie Mellon for a while. I, I remember that. I remember that. And it's uh, the weather's shining. It's a bit chilly, but the weather's shining. So that's nice. Uh, episode eight. I'm guessing you and I have got the same one. What's yours? Uh, I don't know if we have the same one. There's eight bits in a bite. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I, was just too, I, I, I was just too cubed. But yeah, eight bits in the bite, of course. Magic, magic eight ball. Yeah, magic eight ball. And four bits is a nibble. Correct. Okay. So <laughs> let's move forward. We're going to talk about this week's news. And of course, this week was uh, the NVIDIA Developers mm -hmm. Conference. So most of the news that, that's relevant this week it came out of that. So if we can take a look at our first slide. So this is all you get to see when you go to a company called the Bot Company. The Bot Company is led by Kyle Vott, um, who's famous for um, the driverless cars. Uh, which ones did he do? Cruises? Cruise. He did cruise. Yeah, cruise. That's right. Which he sold for a lot of money. And he has now raised $150 million for his robotics company, which has nothing. That is their yeah. webpage. Sign up. Um, their 150 raise puts their company at a post value of two billion dollars, and I would like you to read. I would like to read to you something that Carl Vogt said um, because it's relevant. It's only one paragraph. The bot company said it is focusing on automating household chores so people have more time for meaningful pursuits. However, household robotics is a notoriously challenging segment of the robotics market. Unlike in industrial settings, developers of home robots have no certainty about the conditions and the robot the robots will have to operate in. So uh, two parts to the question. First is, what do you think about Carl having a post value of $2 billion on an idea? Well, he's a, a, a worthy opponent if, if we get to that. Um, $2 billion seems like a lot. So they put in $150 million, They only got 7% of the company. And yep. That sounds That's like a hot market to me. me. Uh, and, and I guess, you know, he has a track record. He has a serious right. track record. Yep. Um, and I just in, want to say, in, in, this, know, in this exact space. <laughs> in this exact space, in autonomous right. vehicles, which is robots, subset yep. of robots. And um, so I, I guess people, you know, wanted to back a winner. Um, do you have any comments about his um, uptake on uh, robots in the home? I mean, most people are seeing sure. this now. Uh, and it, it, um, in fact, it goes on to say other home robot developers, including One X, which we've spoken about, right. which recently unveiled the Neo Gamma, which we've spoken about, as it prepares for pilot deployments in select homes. Uh, so we are seeing, um, you know, home adoption, but we, right. I think we're seeing it very, very slowly. And of course, um, I just wanted to know if you had any comments on that. And, you know, obviously that's the market we're focusing on. Well, I mean, my thesis has been for a while that once you get sort of an LLM level intelligence into that robot, like something as smart as, say, Claude 3.7, uh, which is an amazingly impressive model. And uh, the open source models run about six months to a year behind the proprietary ones. So, you know, within a year or two, you're going to see models of that capability. I mean, arguably, uh, DeepSeek is already there. I think when you put that intelligence in the robot, I think it's going to change the dynamics of this equation in a way that's not exactly predictable, even to people very experienced in the robotics field. I think I think it's I a think quantum. I, I, I think, yeah, I think I would agree with you. I think we're certainly, you know, in, in an inflection point, and normally in, in inflection points, you know, things are going to change dramatically, but, but when you it don't does, know the outcome. it wasn't something you you originally predicted. Right. Like nobody predicted that language would be the the beachhead on which AI would make huge advances. Everybody That's thought it would right. be the, robots the first. And yeah. yeah, because because they saw in nature that, you know, we evolved, you know, smarter and smarter creatures to get up to humanity, right? But we were physically capable long before we were intelligent in an intellectual sense. Right. So, but, but, but of course but it, was, it was a strange one to come out because so so much right? time had been wasted in the in the AI winter <laughs> on these on these uh um go fi. Good old fashioned AI. Yeah, you know, on, on the sort of you know the, the right. Chomsky based models of uh, of linguistics. Anyway, let's move on to to the second slide for today, because um, this is going to be the theme that we're going to talk about at the end. Right. Um, so uh, there was an announcement from Boston Dynamics, 
this is one of Boston Dynamics uh, uh, humanoids. The announcement was Boston Dynamics has announced a collaboration with NVIDIA. Boston Dynamics plans to use NVIDIA's Isaac's Groot to build AI capabilities for Atlas. And of course, Atlas right. is there is their humanoid. And so they're announcing, it was one of two announcements, I'll do the second one in a second, but obviously NVIDIA is pushing people towards Isaac and especially with right. this new Groot enhancement. Yeah, it looks incredible. And of course, Boston Dynamics was famous for having the early walking and running, uh, bipeds and quadrupeds, uh, but it was all done with hydraulics. Uh, the, the guy Pratt, I think he comes from the MIT Leg Lab from years and years ago. And in fact, they did simulation for the first 10 years of their existence. They, they've been around a long time, uh, but they went to hydraulics because it had the power and the accuracy, but it's, it's very inconvenient. It certainly wouldn't work in the home. It's too noisy and greasy. And now they're all on the electric bandwagon like the rest of them. But um, right. they seem right. to be doing a good job. Um, well, well let, let's move on to the next one because the next one is also a company that is an announcement of a company that's uh, moving toward Isaac Lab to accelerate yeah. its, its. So let's let's move on to that one. So this company is called Sanctuary AI. It's not a particularly well-known company. But again, the, the announcement from NVIDIA is that Sanctuary AI leverage, leverages NVIDIA Isaac Lab to accelerate dexterous right. learning yep. um sanctuary ai actually has um was ranked by goldman sachs i believe i think it was one of those uh, investment houses it was ranked as having um the third number of robotics patents in its portfolio yeah so okay. Where, a, what, what country are they from don't know Interesting. Uh, but the announcement was Sanctuary is using Isaac Lab to accelerate dexterous learning. So again, second right. announcement. Obviously, it's coming out of obviously it's coming out of um, the NVIDIA, NVIDIA conference. Um, but uh, um, is Isaac? You've already mentioned that. I, are you surprised that people are leaning towards Isaac as opposed to no, not at all, Mijoko, because Mijoko or designing any of their own from scratch. No, I think it makes perfect sense. I think the, the competitor really is uh, Gemini Genesis uh, stuff from Google that seems to be, uh, and they may be using Isaac under the hood. I don't even know. But I mean, everybody uses so much uh, NVIDIA GPU. And when they're not training a model, you know, that they can be using it to, well, I mean, that's what they do. They train a physical model as opposed to a language model with, uh, I'd be interested in where they're getting their, um, are they doing, uh, I'd be very curious if they're doing synthetic uh, Data. They must be doing some sort of synthetic. I'm, I'm guessing they are. That's why they're. That's yeah. why they're. You know, they're, they're doing all this work. In, that's why in, they would need Isaac, Isaac, right? Yeah. Right. So they. Seem now, it's interesting. You mentioned Google. Google. You mentioned. Um, uh, if we can go to the next slide, you mentioned Google's product, which is, if you can remind me again, Groot. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Genesis. New, new, oh, Genesis. That's right, Genesis. <laughs> well, they so, call so, it Gem Genesis. Is the physics engine, and Gemini is the general framework. Okay, the, so what we're, looking at here, it, what we're looking at here is, um, is an announcement from NVIDIA and Google and Disney. And we have uh, the NVIDIA CEO standing next to a uh, cute, cute Disney robot. type robot. Um, and I believe that the, it says here um, that NVIDIA is collaborating with Google and Disney to create a physics engine for robotics. The mm -hmm. open source engine is titled Newton and is expected yeah. to launch later this year. Well, that's not surprising because Disney doing all the CGI films that they do, like The Incredibles and Pixar, um, they've been using simulation very similar to uh, game game simulation, but you know with longer longer yeah. uh, rendering times and more you know higher pixel counts for cinema. So but, they, but as they've been, as they've been, been using. Discussed. You Using know, as physics it's, discussed, to, it, it's a different physics engine. You know, right. we're concerned now about actual physics. They were right. concerned about physics more about visuals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they, I've, I've known some people in that industry, and they definitely have been using physics engine, like more realistic type physics engines to do things like cloth and water, and uh, you know anything that's not like a solid body. Uh, they, they've been starting to use it. Uh, you know, like some you know superheroes cape and that sort of thing or rapunzel's hair yeah that, uh, well that well that brings me to actually our our, our our discussion topic for today which is um the, the sims that we've 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 been criticizing for quite a while and we've been criticizing them because we know they've come out of the um the game development world and the world where visuals are a lot more important than actual physics um it does look like 
um, uh, Groot is taking a lead. Um, you know, we are going to see this 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 uh, uh, Google product, which they say is going to be an open source physics engine. Um, do you still see the need to create your own? I know that you were you were um, uh, banging away at that for quite yeah, a while. I, I, I think um, what I need to do is dig deeper. If you if you want to get into our development process, this is uh, not generic, but I guess you know we're representative. Um, I'm digging deep lately into the Genesis physics engine and understanding how it. I'm particularly interested in how it. Um, meshes and integrates uh, solid body, rigid body physics with uh, soft physics, you know, that can do sponges and food and water and, and cloth, right? So if you're in the kitchen, you're going to need to do towels. You're going to have food. You're going to have pasty stuff like butter. That's all going to be done with particle systems, which are kind of like what I've worked on over the years with a, a pretty famous guy who passed away recently named Ed Fredkin. But um, understanding conservation of energy is important because like in Mujoko, so I, I did a thing in Mujoko where I just uh, simulated a can of soup, you know, it's like six, six inches tall, four inch diameter. And I sit, sit it on a block and during the course, and I don't touch it, I don't go near it because I'm doing something else. And on the course of the simulation, the cylinder just moves over and falls off the edge. And it's like, <laughs> where did that energy come from, you know? <laughs> So I'm curious if Genesis actually fixes those problems. You know, so that's that's my research area of late. Right. Just out of curiosity, where do you think? That, um, was there some? Was there a slight wind that was? That was no, uh, I think it's somewhere? the collision. The estimating the collision of, of particularly flat surfaces on flat surfaces, which is often what you're doing. In the real world, there are little imperfections, right? So there are like so contact slides. points. So it and, and it, it's just it's like. They're doing things on a math level that that just have singularities and and then they it's 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 hard to explain in one sentence or well, that's okay few. that's okay I, th I think i think just touching on it is is good for yeah. right now i don't think we need to drill down too much into into the world right. of, of of simulators especially since the world is changing yep. you know as you can see radically from day to day um I think this has been great. We are not announcing our $2,500 robot that actually does something. Maybe we'll do that next week. We'll see. Um, I will not be giving away any t-shirts this week because although we're getting lots and lots of viewers, we're not getting a lot of commentators. I think we're going to move that over to Discord. So maybe that'll encourage some of the robot-centric people that we're talking to to, uh, to comment. But I want to thank you all for watching. End of episode eight. Look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you.